Good evening, Dr. Ackroyd. I have learned of the unfortunate fate of our colleague. So, you already know. We're collecting money for his family. To have a proper burial in the current climate is a challenge. I am surprised about your reaction to Dr. Strickland's death, considering your disagreement with him. Strickland was young and idealistic. But he had a lifetime to become a great practitioner. He was just lacking insight, and we'll miss him. It's a shame he can't hear you, don't you think? Remorse is a luxury we cannot allow ourselves. Once this epidemic is defeated, we'll take time to mourn fallen colleagues. What do you think of Dr. Tippett's opinion of your promotion, Waverley? I'll admit I feel uneasy obtaining a position due to my rival's death. It's not something that really sits well with me. The death of Dr. Strickland also means the end of his research on the Spanish flu. It's a good thing, I suppose. Unlike others, I would never have reported him. You liked him. Admit it. I'll admit nothing. Strickland was taking too many risks at a critical time. That's not medicine. That's gambling. Gambling with people's lives. Thank you for your time. We'll talk later. Good evening, Mr. Fiddick. It's a pleasure to see you again, Dr. Reed. Can I help you? It seems your surgery was a success. Yes, it was. I'm working here now, fixing what can be fixed. Paying off my debt the only way I know. I'm glad your procedure was a success, Mr. Fiddick. That's good news in these difficult times. Dr. Ackroyd may seem distant and cold, but he's good at his job, and that's all I needed. God bless him. Dedication does not always generate passion. Not only did he save my arm, he saved my life. There's many that wouldn't survive without this hospital. I think it's too soon for you to go back to work. You should rest a little more. Oh, I'm fine. And with this flu and all, no one else has the time to help repair the hospital. I'm glad I can help, Dr. Reed. And what about your family? My children visited this morning. I explained to them that Dad had to stay a little bit longer to repay the good doctors here. How are your children? It's been a long time since I saw them smile. With the mother dead, I'm their only family. They were worried sick with me here. So, you're happy to work here? It's the least I can do, really. I'm a good shippy, you know. And it's much safer than my previous job. Really? Is it safer to work in a hospital during an epidemic? The epidemic is not the only threat we face. My wife died during a German bombing raid.
Are you still blaming yourself for your injury? No. I know I took a chance and I got careless. But everything's good. I promise my boy will be all right. I don't think I saw your children in the Pembroke Hospital. They're still young, Dr. Reed. They never go out at night, and you're never here during the day. Tell me, Harvey, are your children relieved now that you feel better? I believe so. There was so much joy in my daughter's eyes when she saw me move my arm again. I guess I never realized how worried she was about me. How our loved ones feel about us means a lot, doesn't it? Family's everything, Dr. Reed. They're the only reason we get up in the morning. Couldn't put up with his life without them. Is there anything... Really? Unf... <sighs> Goodbye for... Tomorrow, more bodies... Sadly, Good evening. Please, of course. bodies will arrive and then sadly depart. Good evening. So you were the proverbial wolf amongst the sheep, sir. I should have killed you for the sake of many. 